All right, you guys, we have some doozies for you today. So this should be really fun. This is actually game 177. Can you believe it? Amazing. All right. So Brandy, Cindy, Ed, and Janine, what did you come up with for your team name? You're muted, Jean. Janine, you're muted. Oh, yeah. When you come back from the thing, it, a lot of times it has it um, yeah. muted Yeah. Indictments. Already. Shooting for, oh, crap. This, excuse me. I'm trying to put it in the chat. Do you have to say, oh, crap. That's a really long team name. I know. It's getting longer. Yeah, I right know. Now. Don't. Indictments. Shooting for 200. How many are we up to right now? We're up to, Cindy looked it up, but we're up to like 90. What was it, Cindy? It's a four indictments, but 91 felony charges included. 91 in challenge. 91 down. Wow. 200. Over 9,000. <clears throat> where we need to be <laughs> okay janice carl and mike would you come up with if abc news crashes it's susan's fault for distracting mike <laughs> that's not really what it is <laughs> oh uh, no no problem if abc crashes it's talking too loud because you don't notice you're doing this at work right <laughs> I hope not. He's talking and, to himself. And he's, he's being recorded, so there's evidence. Oh, dear. <laughs> we might want to change your name on your screen, Mike. To Mike, <laughs> uh, to Mike at NBC. No. <laughs> he may not even be listening to us right now. Oh, he's on the phone. Ooh, that's scary. All right. So here we go. What we're going to do is we're going to, can somebody quickly, uh, you know, just so so what okay well i guess i could say it so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna do 10 questions or should i just do five i think i'm gonna do five questions per category and then that way we have a more variety and what we're gonna do is i'm gonna pick out five questions and i'm gonna give those to you in the chat and then don't say anything here obviously and what you'll do is you will go back to your room after those five questions and you guys can discuss them together if you want to have one person assigned to keeping track of what the answers are that's great and then you'll get to come back and we will I'll reveal the answers for you so that's how we'll do it so we'll keep it kind of fun i'm going to keep it light and um don't be surprised if you don't know I mean, how do I say this? The goal She's kind of pull a punch and Judy. No, I'm not going to do a punch and Judy. I should <laughs> punch and Judy. I heard about that. I've only yeah. been to one or two of these, and I've I've heard of punch and Judy. <laughs> I would talk about punch and Judy. It's rather infamous. I wasn't there either. So <laughs> it's getting better. The story gets better and better. It's like the Indian yes. trip. So it's what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to give these questions, and hopefully they're figure outable. And if you personally don't know them, don't be discouraged because that's the fun of it is, is learning new things and having conversations and trying to figure out the stuff. It's not about who knows all this information. Nobody wants to be with a know-it-all around them all the time. So what we're going to do, the first category we're going to do is uh, children's literature from the 50s and 60s. So um, you can... Take notes as you go through this, if it helps you to um, to go through them. We first did this category, five. We first did this category back in May of 2021. So I'm gonna delete those. Well, use Google. Yeah, no, no we don't get to do anything. No but Googling. All right. But what you can see from your desk. Yeah, you can see if it's within eyesight, you can look at the spine of the book, but you cannot or, open or if the, the book. The book happens to be open to a particular page. If the book already. is sitting in front of you and you've mm -hmm. got the periodic table of elements sitting there, well, okay, but no. I keep thinking I'm going to cheat and put up posters of U.S. presidents and and periodic table of element uh, mouse pads. <laughs> I think I think I've come up with a corollary that if you have a globe, it, you can only go with the fa side of the globe that's already facing you. You right. can't spin the globe, but. I have my periodic table mug that April gave me. See, see, so, yeah, so I have to decide which part of the mug I need to have facing me. So uh, <laughs> there you go. What all information is on your periodic table? Uh, it's old. Does, so like it's, for each element, does it indicate like the density and stuff? 
Oh yeah, just like the chart and oh, well, wow. not density. It, it's atomic mm. number and blah blah blah. It's okay, so we will not be doing any of that today. What it? Help very much with children's literature, though, Janine. <laughs> yeah, I don't think you're going to have anything to do with children's literature. Okay, so here we go for the first question. I, I'll look. <laughs> What's the topic? I said children's literature from the fifties and sixties. I put it in the chat, Carl. One now. Oh, there it is. Okay. So I'm going to give you five quotes from books and you have to tell me what the book is. And they're all fairly famous books. So it's not like some obscure book. So here's the first one and I will put them in the chat and then read it for the recording. And so they were taken from the palace and sent far away to the castle in the air and they have not been seen since. That is why today in all this land, there is neither rhyme nor reason. So don't say anything. Okay, question number two. The doctor was delighted and said that it was very unusual for an American family to have a mouse. <laughs> question number three how was it that a man so exact and fastidious could have made this error of a day how came he to think that he had arrived in london on saturday the 21st day of december when it was really friday the 20th the 79th day from only from his departure question four i just came across it in the forest it was hanging over a bush and i thought at first somebody lived there so i rang it and nothing happened and then i rang it again very loudly and it came off in my hand as and as nobody seemed to want it i took it home and okay hmm. We also have had some problem with some of these questions. Once you get into the chat uh, at your breakout room, the chat doesn't show up again. If so, somebody should just copy and paste them in again. Whoever's I'm, okay. I'm copying for us. Okay. Question five and the last in this category. It doesn't happen all at once, he said. You become. It takes a long time. That's why it doesn't often happen to people who break easily or have sharp edges or who have to be carefully kept. Generally, by the time you are real, most of your hair has been loved off and your eyes drop out and you get loose in the joints and very shabby. But these things don't matter at all because once you are real, you can't be ugly except to people who don't understand. For those people who are watching the video, the word real is in a capital letter. And I think that is pertinent. Okay, so I'm looking for the name of the story. Okay, I'm going to send you to your rooms. And doodle. Oh, I hit the wrong button. That's why I didn't let you go to your rooms. There's multiple screens open here. So, all right, go to your rooms and discuss and come back. I will bring you back in a few minutes. Okay. Oops, let me start my video back up. Was five was five okay? It's the first time we've done five. Five is just fine. Okay. There was, could have been a different five questions though. <laughs> <laughs> but, different question one at least. Oh really? I like that one, huh? Especially my group knew them all. They all were children's story lovers. I know I knew one. There you go. See, sometimes people know things. Okay, so let's go to question number one, which I'm going to um, not read back, but the the couple of the gimmies on that one are the are the phrase, 
rhyme nor reason, especially since they're capitalized, rhyme nor reason. And the answer is the Phantom Toll Booth. Oh, damn. Norman Jester, 1961. Let me put that in the chat. Well, my group were saying we should make this book the, the, the mascot of the Skeptics organization. I think so. I love puns and stuff like that. These are just so clever. I haven't read that book in years. So, okay. So the second I one. It. I reread it so many times. It's finally, <laughs> finally a category you know the answers to, Janine. Yep. <laughs> She's not a TV movie person. So, you know. Okay, so this one is one of the keywords in here is a mouse. And the answer is Stuart Little from E.B. White, 1945. And the third one, I guess, is a little more difficult. I don't know. He arrived in London on Saturday. And then, you know, something about the days all being mixed up. And this is a very old, famous book, Around the World in 80 Days, J uh, Jules Verne, 1873. But that's not from the 50s and 60s. All right, whatever. Yeah, te technically, <laughs> 18, it's not even the 18, it might be the 1850s and well, 1860s. If I remember correctly, whoever did this round, it was children's things that were children's literature from when this person was a kid in the 50s and 60s. Thank you, Carl. Thank you for saving me. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Okay, that's right. It was for people who were in their 50s and 60s, more or less. Anyway, children's literature. I should change the name, just children's lit. Okay, the next one is uh, a forest, and they found something hanging over a bush. Anybody know this one? Yeah. Eeyore loses his tail from the world of Pooh. The world of Pooh. A A, a, a Milne. Is that Milne? How do you pronounce Milne. it? Milne, yeah. Oh. <laughs> also not the 1950s and 60s. Do we have to have the exact title correct? No, no. Okay. So Winnie the Pooh is sufficient? Yeah, that's fine. But it is from the world of Pooh. Okay, so yeah. the last one, I remember about when I wrote categories at the very beginning, what a pain it was because you guys all held me to it exactly. And you're right. <laughs> I shouldn't say in 50s and 60s. You're right. Okay, the last one. Do anybody know this one? The Velveteen Rabbit. The Velveteen Rabbit. Brandy has it memorized. Really? <laughs> well, that was her kid's favorite book. <laughs> Oh Stuart my Little was my kid's favorite book. Okay, so I'm changing the category now to children's lit. I'm not taking, I'm taking this out. Interestingly, three of these are old enough that they would be public domain by now. I would be surprised if they aren't. Yeah. So Somebody's they probably for, make a movie on them right now. Download a copy. Yeah, but there's something about holding a book in your hands and, you know. I'm an electronic book reader. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, Winnie the Pooh, because it's in the public domain, someone made like this horror movie about like yep. a, Winnie the Pooh goes berserk and starts eating people. What <laughs> came out How just like just that? just like last year? Because last year when it went to public domain, they're like, "Here's our here's our Winnie the Pooh movie." Time yep. to ruin people's childhoods. Oh man, did it at least use honey out of them? Did you use honey when he ate him? I, I don't know. Well, that's important information there. Did you use any of them or not? Okay, so let's get our let's get our scores. Indictments shooting for two hundred. What did you score? Five. Oh my goodness! I'm making these too easy. If ABC crashes, it's it's Susan's fault for distracting Mike. Four. Mm -hmm. Okay. Next category. Hey, we're in second place. <laughs> next category remember even a broken clock is right twice a day that's true okay so now this category is one we've done before also it's money python what did you put in the chat mike what is that a video to watch on oh this is the winnie the pooh thing oh dear oh dear winnie the pooh blood and honey trailer oh, oh gosh blood and <laughs> honey <watch> later. <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty sad my goodness, why can't they just let things be? Because it sells, I guess. Okay, so this one's Monty Python. So some of you may be fans, some of you may not be. Some people might have never heard of him before. I don't know, but we're going to find out. All right, but this one is canon. Everybody knows this one. So in one classic sketch, what does nobody expect? 
Okay, and this one, question number two. Oops, I got to put the question numbers. Sorry, I had that wrong. Question number two, what famous musician produced and financed the life of Brian? Yeah. Which is another one of these ones that should definitely be a, a skeptic um, go-to. <laughs> question two question. in question three okay, it's question three question three John Cleese went on to write and star in what classic British comedy show between 75 and 79 Question four, which member of Monty Python trained to be a doctor? What a waste. <laughs> Monty Python's way too funny. Okay. Question five. Oops. What 1985 film was directed and co-written by Terry Gilliam, which is one of the members, original members of the Monty Python, and was listed by Wire Magazine as number five on its list of the top 20 sci-fi movies. Okay, I'll let you guys go to your rooms and discuss. <laughs> and I may show up in your rooms this time. Go visit them. Which number was that, Cindy? I forgot what number that was. Number three. The British yes, number comedy. Three. 1975 to 79, Salty Tower. You know what? I bet I could copy these in. I bet this these are short enough. I can copy them into chat. Oh, there you go. See them. Because my I write them You're down right. because here you go. I Let's... have a next version of it. Here they are. Okay. Oh, thank you. Oh, I did too. <laughs> Sorry about that. Oops. Oh, here we go. That's nice. Go so anybody. Which one do you know? Uh, he number, three. Of the, oh. number three, maybe faulty number towers. three was faulty towers with the W. No, F A W L T Y. F A W O W is miss. All right, yeah, yeah. that's okay. supposed to be like the name of his. Uh, that's his spell. It's going to be a spelling error. I can't put that in. <laughs> I know, yeah. All right, we don't, we don't get judged on spelling so so we're okay um i only remember the dead parrot skit yeah I it's the, the life of brian but... the spanish inquisition <laughs> nobody expects the spanish inquisition that's what it is oh got it okay great number one it's like i know this one <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea who produced The Life of Brian, even though I've seen it a million times. Well, who trained to be a doctor? They, they let him well, get away well. with so much other stuff. It's amazing that that's one, that's they said no to them at all. Yeah. Especially early on. She's been muted for some reason. But she's busy. 
I'm, I'm not on this team. So do you guys got all the questions in chat? Oh, yeah, we're all done. I gave them to everybody, the other group. Oh, you guys are done? Okay. Yeah. So, oh, well, so for number three, will you accept watery fowls or farty owls? <laughs> You remember how it's a little too easy for you, huh? You remember at the beginning of the show how the letters on the sign always were falling had fallen oh, yeah, off. Oh, right. that's right. That's right. Different words. Oh my! God. I even I even knew this category, so you know, Ooh. you know, you're you're shooting pretty low. You need to be <laughs> able to get any of the answers at all. Oh my goodness! Okay. Um. I'm gonna have to I go. Put, I put it. William Tell the William Tell skit in the in the chat. <clears throat> yeah, these are just too easy. I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to bump up my game here. No, I actually feel like okay, I can actually contribute for once. Well, Jadine feels that way right now. Over the literature when she's like, I got these, I got these. Okay, so this is gonna be all closed rooms. Five is easy. One, two, three. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, five is easy to move through. It's got to pick up. I, I, I'm deciding now what I'm used for the questions. I'm just not doing it. I didn't know who would show, and I didn't want to do stuff that people have already done. I didn't want to put back somebody else's category that they already done. That would be like wrong. All right. <laughs> Where are all the other people that are coming late, Susan? Very late. They're coming very late. They'll be here at 5 Eastern time. 5 Eastern time. Oh, yeah. Oh, they're very late. They're very, very late. Somebody asked. This was, if this was a regular that was... trivia, that would only be halfway through. Although yeah. it's like we're getting through quicker. Yeah. We'd still be on round. Kevin round. asked if it was 5 Eastern time. That was Kevin. That was Kevin. Yeah. Where is he? Maybe it's not five Eastern time yet. <laughs> well, I answered it. <laughs> okay. Is yeah. Kevin showing up today? I don't know. He's on the East Coast. He Who? should. Who? Uh, Kevin? Who knows? Okay, here we go. So Monty Python. Everybody knows their Monty Python mostly, right? I heard you guys talking about it a little bit. You kind of know it. Like, great. Who would you send us, Janice? Is this more... Pooh Bear? Uh, no, I sent you a, I sent you the William Tell skit from Monty Python. It's oh. only 22 seconds long. Okay, got it. I'll have a look at it soon. Okay, so Monty Python. Oh, here comes Cindy back. Well, let me wait till she loads in here. Oh, did we lose Cindy? Yeah, hmm. she either jumped out or something wrong with her internet. She has a lot of problems with her internet lately. There she is. She's <coughs> okay. So, in one classic sketch, 
what does nobody expect? This has just become part of the uh, the world of, uh, you know, everybody should know this phrase, the Spanish Inquisition. Nobody if you haven't it. seen that sketch, you got to see that sketch. It's just classic. Did Is that the know? name of the sketch? Yeah, just put in the Spanish Inquisition. You hear it come up. It's one of those phrases that just comes up. Our chief weapon of surprise, surprise and fear. Our, our two chief weapons yeah. are surprise, fear, and a fanatical devotion to the three, three, our three, three chief three. weapons are fear, surprise, <laughs> fanatical devotion to the Pope. <laughs> okay, so we just heard the sketch. So it's like the dead parrot sketch. You'll just hear these things. People will be talking and it's just like common. People should kind of know these things that are just phrases people use and you'll go i know the dead parrot sketch yeah there you go so so you'll just be talking to somebody and somebody will say something well not like the spanish inquisition or something and, and now you'll know the reference like, oh, i will go cool. watch it you'll go watch it. you got it okay so the next one did anybody know this one yeah what famous musician produced and financed the carl new mike George harrison from the beatles Who? George Harrison from the Beatles. George Harrison, really? Oh, Mick Jagger? Oh, my gosh. No, oh, it's George problem. Harrison. George Harrison from the Beatles. That's a line from something. Just saying it like that. George Harrison from the Beatles. I think that's fun. Okay, John John Cleese, or I will um, start in... Can I spell that right? Oh, I think it's spelled this way. F-A-L-T-Y? Yeah, or okay. Or as um, Kyle was trying to say, Ooh. Kyle, Carl, <laughs> Carl was trying to say it's actually, what is it? It's right in the chat. Well, well, so so at the beginning of the episode, they always showed the sign and the letters were always rearranged. So sometimes it started out as faulty towers. And one time it was watery fowls. And another time it was party owls. <laughs> like the words get rearranged because it kept falling or so. It was, Faulty Towers is just impossible for me to watch. I've got them. I've watched them all. I've got lots of lines memorized from it, but it's hard to watch because he's so dysfunctional. He's so in, the, in the United States, they did a United States version of it called New Heart, <laughs> which was. Uh, I liked New Heart. Basically. Now that one I could watch. That was my, awesome. This is, I'm Daryl. This is my brother Daryl. My other brother Daryl. I love that. This is my brother Daryl. My other brother Daryl. Okay, and then the last one, no, the next one, number four. What member trained to be a doctor? It was Graham Chapman. Uh, that was the guy I was trying to remember. Yeah, it was Chapman. Okay, she almost had it. Can we count it? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, it does not work that way. No. Yeah. Okay, question five. The Did anybody know this one? I've never watched sure. it. Oh, of course, Carl has. Time Bandits. <laughs> Oh, Brazil. Brazil. I forgot about that one. I've never seen it. I, think I, tried, yeah. I think I tried to watch the Brazil like the first Mom, of it. Dad, that was... don't touch it. It's evil. Huh. It's it. What is it about? It, it's, 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 it's hard to describe that film in a short statement. It's a dystopian society where um, the grandmother from be... Who's the Boss gets her face stretched out. <laughs> yeah, but it's supposed to be a, like a strictly controlled society with a lot of terrorist activities and people who cross the government disappear and they disappear, they get tortured and they're never like they're never let go. And beware of government typos. Yeah. Yay. I, so, I heard, uh, there was another one that was a cult classic called Eraserhead, and I tried to watch that and I said what, am, what what am I watching here? I didn't get very far. I didn't get to that one either. His movies and are I like weird stuff. I like weird stuff too. I think you have to be in a room with other people who are really into weird stuff and then you kind of Or on them. acid one. I'm not sure. <laughs> I've never done that, but I would that. Help. Yeah, I like Eraserhead, but um I think the main character is kind of um insane. A little bit. No, I mean He's actually probably insane, and some of that stuff is just his hallucinations. Oh, you think the actor was insane? No, the main character, not oh, the actor. Okay. So the actor did a good job at looking like he's. But the main character is probably insane, and some of that stuff was just his hallucinations, like the bleeding chicken and the woman in the radiator. You really do know this stuff. Okay. <laughs> she has actually watched it. All right. So let's go to our scores. 
So let's go. If ABC News crashes, it's Susan's fault for distracting Mike. Five. Five. Yeah. Oh, wow. Indictments, shooting for 200. How many? We got two. <gasps> ooh, ooh. Then, then we get, uh, yeah, we got, uh, yeah, we just got two. Hmm. Oh, wow. Okay, I thought I'd made that too easy. Okay, well, this ooh. next category will probably be a lot easier for you. This is some only five questions from Disney. We're not taking a five minute break. Yeah, you can take a five minute break. Right. Do you need one? I need a five minute, but you can go in without me. Oh, I'll catch up. Go ahead, take a five minute break. Oh, wait, 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 wait. We gotta take a picture. Ooh. Well, I'll take a picture when we get back. Everybody, take a take a little bit of break if you need. I completely forgot. I'm working on my my <gasps> picture. Oh, that's, oh, that's nice. Susan, while you're waiting, why don't you type them into a text document? Then you could just copy paste the questions into the chat. Well, they are. Oh, I have them there. They're in a spreadsheet. You can't see it. Ah. If, if I did, you would see them. Yeah, yeah, they're all there. Everybody stretch mm -hmm. your legs. Get up and do some exercise. I gotta pick, I gotta pick the um. The bonus. Let me pick out a bonus. Some of these are really hard. That Carl doesn't know. <laughs> we helped him with the last one, and the and the we've helped him with both both of them. I mean, he knew more than I did, but. I was able to help. Oh, good. Okay. okay. You could have been on our team. We could have used some help. <laughs> we have uh, my brothers and my partner actually now um, are big Monty Python fans. So oh, yeah. I like them in short doses. I think they're hilarious, but I don't, I'm not really one to just watch all, you know, like skit after skit. Oh my gosh, I would do it. Oh, but I think I, knew I could. I like the short ones. They just crack me up. Like the fish slapping dance and the the. Uh, have you seen that? Oh yeah, God, those guys. The are lumberjack brilliant. ones. Oh, oh the lumberjack. lumberjack. I'm a lumberjack. And I'm okay. We're all nice. I, I know I've seen them. I just can't remember. But you know the thing, Monty Python couldn't play today. I mean, you know, no, not in political with the political correctness that we're we're supposed no. to be practicing now. A lot they're, of, they're of their time, yeah. From back in the day. What a shame, because it's so funny. Well, I think a lot of comedians couldn't play nowadays. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Well, that's true. Even I mean, they, they, I mean, because comedians, you know, are, are just all about breaking the, the uh, norms and the expectations. And that's why their jokes are funny. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I agree. There's a lot that I'm happy is gone. You know, like Benny Hill, the one that were Benny Hinn or whatever. Benny Hill, the guy used to always say stuff about women and he was just, I, I, ugh. yeah, I didn't really watch him at all. It's Benny I Hill, he was right? He was silly. He was just too silly. So I, so I didn't watch him long enough to know that he was really sexist. Very bad. And he, it was, it was humor. I, I've never liked bathroom humor or any of that kind of stuff. Hmm. Deborah loves that kind of stuff and Paula they just can't stop laughing <laughs> I just find it like yeah it's not mine it funny I don't get it it's not clever. yeah it's not mine either yeah from what I understand the Amish love it so were these on TV or were they movies or how did they come yeah. out Brazil's a movie uh yeah. Life of Brian Monty Python Monty Python they started as a BBC program yeah, oh. but it came on PBS. Broad, PBS here in the United States broadcast it, and that's yeah. how most Americans got to know Mon about Monty Python. Yeah. Okay, Janine. So you've not heard of Life of Brian? Oh yeah, oh. I might have even seen it. Well, you should. But it would have been a long time ago. It's very good, and it's so something wonderful. I wouldn't remember. Yeah, the one. Yeah, it's I remember the one where he, he dies being the Messiah and they go back and forth. Yeah, That's Life, the life of, Brian. of Brian, yeah. Anybody, it's, it's excellent. The Messiah must be the Messiah. Okay, I'm the Messiah. Here's I the have the sandal. 
Follow the man with the sandal. No, no, no follow I have the holy the gourd. The gourd. Yeah, that's what it was. The gourd. And there's the Knights of Knee, which was great. Sketch. Oh, I love the Knights of Knee. <laughs> and the rabbit. <laughs> or a path. Defensive I have rabbit. A path. I have a path. Or the, the, the rabbit who. What was oh, rabbit? I'm not a rabbit. Huge. Oh, <laughs> I'm severely handicapped having not had TV. No, 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 Janine. Well, if you have a computer, you could stream them. You can yeah, get you streaming can watch them app. Yes, like Netflix on Prime Video. That's where you can find some online Python movies. But then I need time. Well, right. Janine, you've got, you've got wealth, wealth <laughs> of knowledge you do problem. not have in your world that you have not Basically. really. I mean, none of us would know. What I don't to think do I remember any chicken. If if a chicken was like coughing or, or whatever chicken's equivalent to a chicken coughing is, we would all panic. We would be like, "What the hell do we do with that chicken?" You would be like, "Okay, you pick it up, turn it over, bop it, and then on the back, <laughs> Heimlich, <laughs> chicken Heimlichs." <laughs> I know how to raise raccoons. There you go. Seriously. And train a dog. There's all kinds of stuff. And milk a cow. Janine, that don't be sad that you do not have your skills in your area. And okay, drive so a honey good. wagon. So has it been five minutes? Oh, yeah. yeah it's been past okay. more than five minutes. American presidents. Ooh. Oh, we just this did this. Happened. No, these are last, different questions. Last Thursday. This is different questions. Oh. There's a lot of information about American presidents out there. I don't know if you know. Okay, let me just change the number on this one here real quick. Got the number four, five. Okay. Whew. Which president signed Mother's Day into law? Question number two, which president founded the March of Dimes, which sought to fought, fight polio? You were going to like it. Couldn't do it away. Okay, question three, which president was the first to visit Europe while in office? And by office, I mean president. Okay, question four. This president born in 1913 was born Leslie King Jr. At the age of two, his divorced mother remarried and he was renamed after his new father. On being sworn in, he said, I assume the presidency under extraordinary circumstances. Question five. The president is sworn into office at noon Eastern time on what day of the year? I'm, I'm looking for a month day, not Tuesday or something like that. I mean, a particular president or just in general? In general. The American president is now sworn, now, currently, sworn into office at noon on a certain day of the year. And that's just the way it is. Might have been different back in the day, but now that's what it is. Okay. Wow, it feels weird to only do five questions. It's just over too quickly. Yeah. Cindy, you, you're you in room one, right? Yeah. Oh, Avi's here. Look at that. Hey, Avi. Hey, my dad just told me that you guys are having a um Yeah, and it's a shortened one. It's five questions only. Are you around? Yeah. What time is it? It's only uh 9:08 p.m. 
I'm going to put you, okay, well, we're just doing a shortened version. It's more for fun. I'll put you, they just went off to the room. I'll give you the questions right now. I'll be right there. Okay. Yeah, hello. Isn't that great? Avi showed up. Okay, so I want to give him the questions again. Um, this is American presidents, right? Yeah. Do it so I don't give him the answers to. And he's got a sprout on. Oh, it's so nice to see you with your sprout. Yep. So we're just been doing five questions because we have short, small teams, just two teams, very short, yeah. just for the fun of it. I thought we'd try to get people in who have not been able to play it, like you. Leslie King was uh, Gerald Ford. Hasn't question number three been asked before? Because it seems so familiar to me. Yeah, all, all of these have been all asked. of them been asked because I'm too lazy uh, to write the categories. Right. Okay. Uh, yes. <laughs> Peace out for a second. Okay. But some people have never seen these before, and it doesn't mean we're going to remember them. Yeah, it's like I re remember the discussion in for number three. Okay. And I remember being far later than I expected, but it's I'm not sure. Because, like, there were a lot of early presidents who went to Europe, but just not well in office. It's uh, Woodrow Wilson. That's what I was thinking from, remember, from I th he must have been, a, must have been maybe on you on my team, but Woodrow <coughs> Wilson is what I was thinking. Which president signed Mother's Day? In okay. Mother's Day. Mm. Well, when, how he, some, excuse me? He's been around since I was a kid. Yeah, well, it's been, it was signed in, I think it became law or it became a a thing back in the 1800s, like maybe the late 1800s. And I forgot he popularized it. Eddie but, was and then, and then the president, I guess, I guess she got the president to, to uh, pass a law or the Congress to pass a law about it. Yeah. But I, I don't remember, remember the date. The name of the woman who who thought it up and which pre and he was president at that time. I would guess Teddy Roosevelt. He seems like the kind of president who did stuff like that. Yeah, but that was 1900s. Yeah. And I think this I think mm -hmm. Mother's Day came about in the late 1800s. Okay. So but, who was yeah, but that just having it come about and having it signed yeah, yeah. into a law are two different things. I'm I'm good with Teddy Roosevelt. Okay. All right. First of it at Europe. Well, it wasn't George Washington. <laughs> well well John John Quincy Adams went, but not as president, I don't think. What do you think about Woodrow Wilson? Was it that late? That's good event. Seems very late. It seems very late, but as president while in office, I mean, it was fairly dangerous to cross the ocean. True. Yeah, maybe we'd go uh, Wilson had to go to do the, what, the Treaty of Versailles or something, the end of World War One. But maybe. Maybe it was earlier. Somebody needs mute. Um, so born in nineteen thirteen. Would have been president in what the fifties or sixties thereabouts. Nineteen thirteen. Well, wasn't this the one who took office after um? JFK was assassinated. OBJ? Maybe. OBJ because of the, uh, or Truman, either one because the president died. Yeah, because it's assuming the presidency under extraordinary circumstances. Or would it be Gerald? No, it could be Gerald Ford. I don't think you would have said that. Um, maybe it was OBJ. How old was he when he became president? I guess he could. Yeah. Have, he could no, no, that that would that would solve it. Um, 
don't remember any president. Yeah, I think you're right that it's one that um we named after his father. I'm being which president changed I don't remember any president changing his name. But it um, would have been when he was very little at the age yeah. of two. Leslie changing his first name. Leslie King Jr. Us uh, LBJ then. Lyndon, he was Lyndon. Um, let's see. Gerald Ford and LBJ, Gerald Ford Truman. Who is more likely born in 1913? What was Truman's first name? I can't remember it at the Harry? moment. Harry? Is that oh, Harry? Yeah. Harry? Harry Truman. Well, it wasn't, let's see, we know for sure it wasn't George Washington. <laughs> see, Adam. Wasn't Abraham Lincoln? <laughs> Abraham Lincoln was born in a log cabin he built with his own hands. Right, yes. <laughs> Which means he could have also uh, been born in 1913, because that would have been after his log cabin was built. Well, that's true, yes. After he had built a slug cabin. Yeah. <laughs> I also saw a quote from Abraham Lincoln saying not to believe everything you read on the internet. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That guy got around. Yeah. Uh oh, the bosses here look 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 knowledgeable. <laughs> yeah. Well, you can see what we have so far, Susan. We're working on number four. Yeah, that's an interesting conversation. This is the best part of the best part of running the the um the game is sitting and listening to people mm -hmm. talk themselves in and out of questions that are correct or wrong it's hilarious yeah <laughs> let's see 1913 to 1940 you usually have to be what 45 45 old. you have to be at that least would... 45 or 50 to be president yeah that's my so it's okay. probably somebody in the late 50s or 60s. That would have been, Truman was not 32. So let's go, let's see. Um, LBJ took 1964. That could be. Uh, 1913, that would be 51. Uh, Ford, well, let's see, 1913 is like 10 years after my dad was born. Let's see, um, what year did Ford become 1970? That could be two. Three? Yeah. Um, 1913. Both possible, 50, 60 years 60. old. 60. I'm thinking Ford. He'd be 60 when he took office. Uh, uh, LBJ would have been 51. I think he's older than that. Truman would have been 32. Uh, so it's definitely not Truman. Okay. So extraordinary things would be Truman, LBJ, or Ford. And... So four was after Nixon? Yeah. Ford took over after Nixon. It's a rookie dick. I'm thinking Ford. Oh, wait a minute. We have more questions. We're not we're not all the way there yet. Let's see. Which number is that? Let's go with four is Ford. What do we have for three? The three would Wilson. Oh, we have Wilson, which yeah, we have probably we late. Got them all answered. We got them yeah, all have late. them all answered. Wilson's probably late. Yeah. There's probably somebody earlier than that. Um Lincoln didn't. Grant didn't. Maybe one of those mid-late. Teddy Roosevelt could also have done that. What? 
Teddy Roosevelt could also have done that. Oh. He traveled all around. He traveled a lot. Uh, Yeah, but Teddy Roosevelt was after Wilson. No, he was before Wilson, wasn't he? he was yeah. Um, yeah, I think he was like kind of early. Let's go with Teddy. You want to go with Teddy? I think so. He's, I think it's a better choice than Wilson. Okay. It's earlier, unless you can think of someone even earlier who might have gone. Pierce, Arthur. The other thing, the other thing, somebody pointed out, around that time, it was finally starting to get relatively safe because we had steamships. Yeah. Back a little yeah. too far, and it's, it's sailing ships, and that was dangerous. Yeah, yeah. Okay, we have nine and eight. We have nine seconds. So Susan better get back to the main room or she's going <laughs> to. And we're joined by Avi. That is so cool. Avi, hi. Hi. You, you, haven't, you haven't lost your sprout in all of oh. your. Yeah, I thought yeah. Europeans came around and pulled weeds. Uh, not in Germany. They they like their weeds. <laughs> so for those of you who don't know, Ivy is uh was one of the players who played for a year or more with Trivia for Us. Years, yeah. Ended up taking on a, a assignment in Germany. Is that where you're at right now? Yes. So well, he's and his father and his uncle play trivia. <laughs> he got his his father and uncle into this, and they play all the time. So that's yeah. very cool. That's why I want to do this kind of thing. Try to do at least once a month is to do these kinds of um trivia so we can hang out and do it at a time where other people who normally couldn't join us can susan did you um you, you should have like invited me or something because i didn't see it know about this until my dad just called me a few minutes ago saying hey i i heard that susan had this thing going on well, i think my Europe told... would make it i didn't think you're i didn't invite anybody from europe for some reason thinking that it yeah. wouldn't really but i guess it does work huh yeah, yes, I, mean, I yeah. thought that was the purpose. Yeah. Well, I was thinking more of the East Coast, but yeah, you're right. Uh, Europe does make sense. No, we're now. thinking of the Europeans. So, okay. well, oh, I, I just know. wandered off to the TV, and and um, the ABC News has just crashed. <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> Mike, uh -oh. you're on mute. Oh, he's probably talking. I, I would know. I would. I would get some sort of, I'm sure some sort of alarm would go off. Somebody would notice. Oh, if, if, you, oh, if it did, says oh, Jimmy that's... Carter died, it's because Mike accidentally hit the wrong button. Oh, apparently, apparently, they're, they're routinely running test obituaries on Jimmy Carter every now and then. Oh. oh. Not on the air, but in, in the studio. In the yeah. Somebody's going to hit the wrong button. It's going to go out. That has happened before. Not to, I, not to I know of our, but it, I've you hear tell of, New news outlets. You let him local news will accidentally run the obituary, jump the gun on an obituary. Or yeah. a, well, they yeah, run a lot of obituaries on people who, just in case that are just sitting in the obituary yeah. file. Okay, so how did you Dewey, get Dewey American defeats president? Truman. Yeah. yeah, there you go. Okay, American presidents. That was very interesting to listen to your guys' conversation. Best part of running a game like this is sitting there listening to you guys talk yourselves in and out of answers. And the rationale you come up with it are with the answers are fascinating. And I don't have to contribute because I don't always know the answers. So it's really, I feel smart watching you guys going, Haha, I know the answer to that one. Okay, first question. Who signed Mother's Day into law? That was Woodrow Wilson. Oh. All right. The conspiracy that Woodrow Wilson's initials are WW and he was president in WW1. I'm sure that's the conspiracy it's been suggested that he caused World War One. If it's not one, I'm starting it right now. <laughs> I think it's already started. Okay, number two, I'm really shocked. I am really, really shocked at um, room one. Absolutely, oh. you guys. How could you not know? Who had who had polio? See? Ed, uh, FDR. That's what I, that's what I got for. <laughs> You guys and who's on the dime? Oh, that's right. Who's on the dime? I don't know who's on the dime. Who's I heard. I I don't remember where I heard this, but I definitely heard recently that there was some people who think that he didn't actually have polio for some reason, and but I don't know. So you should look, double check that to see if that is actually. 
Well, those are the same people who think Woodrow Wilson so, started World War One. Do this those people think he had no disease and it was faked, or that he had some other disease instead of polio? Some other disease. Okay. That, oh. that, that okay, was that's like, a little less crazy. It was polio. I'm sure it was. I, I've been to his house, and you've seen and and well, there you house. go. You can. I see. remember reading that in his. Oh yeah. yeah, he was and super history. strong. He had an elevator belt that he had a rope connected. He had to pull the rope to go from one floor to the other. He wouldn't mm. use the elevator elevator. He had to use <sighs> he, his, his muscle strength and his arms was so strong. Really interesting if, person. If okay. you ever get to Maine, there's a there's a island off. Um, Lubeck, Maine, called Campobello. It's actually part of Canada, but that's where they their house is, their summer home, oh. and it's kind of fun to go visit. Is it part of Canada? Yeah, you have to go over bridge. You know, you could almost throw a rock over to Canada, and I'm sure they do. But <laughs> <laughs> ah, those Canadians. Okay, question number three. This is the one that we've had, all these questions we've had before, but this one really is, um, I, I remember lots of conversations about this because of course, lots of presidents visit Europe and in our past, we're like, oh, I remember when, you know, this happened and that happened. And then Ed made a good point about the safety of allowing a president to be able to go on a, a ship overseas is, you know, that's a huge risk asking but the first president to do it while in office was Woodrow Wilson. What about uh, Napoleon Bonaparte? He was the first president of France. <laughs> Technically, the he visited Europe. The category is called American presidents. It Does, uh, doesn't mean every answer has to be an American president. Well, it was like the category we did earlier with the 50s and 60s literature. Nothing really. <laughs> you're in, exactly. You're going to not mat necessarily match the category. If Karen was here right now, she would say, it's I right. think it's fine. It's fine. Karen's not here, is she? No, well, she's here <laughs> in spirit because she's down the street from me. Just one block, not even a block from me right now. This was fascinating. Now, team one, listening to you guys discuss this was so interesting. Team two, you remember the question or you do the answer, but team one. You you weren't you weren't leaving very fast, but I didn't take that as a hint. Gerald Ford. <laughs> so Imagine his uh his first his first the his biological father going, God damn it! I could have had a, a, a president U.S. president, you know Leslie King Jr. So his name would have been president. You know that's the problem. You know you should never divorce. Well, that's because you can't have a king for president. <laughs> Got it. <laughs> you rejected the notion of having a king actually that is really yeah. clever that's another conspiracy theory we can start right now okay so and this is one of those things that we really didn't pay attention to very much before you know like what day do they what day did the u.s presidency um uh the college votes come together and they they <laughs> they do this really strange thing that nobody's ever paid attention to until just 2021 which was january 6 nobody knew that day ever and and now this is another one that's become a lot more popular as we're actually paying attention is the day that they're sworn i, I, don't know, I think that's see, that pretty much everyone knew that january 20th is inauguration no, day i never I, paid attention to it i knew it was in january really? somewhere i thought it was oh, like yeah. the first tuesday or something i never paid attention and we thought that was almost a trick question. It seems so obvious. Yeah. yeah. Did anyone not anyone watching aside from Susan not know that? I mean, before because I knew it in the last few years, but I never paid attention. We're we're in this we're in the West Coast. I'm in the West Coast, so a lot of the stuff that happens on the East Coast, it's we don't watch it's it live. Only three hours. It's not a full I day. I know, but you feel like it's like you go to work and you and you. <sighs> I don't know. You just don't pay attention to Nothing the days because it's all happening over there somewhere. It's just weird. We got two. Oh, two. Okay, so two points for team two. Indictments, shooting no, for 200. Team one. Team one got two. Or team one got two. Okay, so it's if ABC News crashes, it's Susan's fault for distracting Mike. How many? Five. Five. Ooh. Whoa, nine to 14, you guys. Ooh. I should be giving you Avi. Maybe some. We can ask some math questions. 
We no. want some stat and math questions. Oh, he's going to do too well with. I'm not sure I should... Questions. I, I don't know anything about. <laughs> I don't know if these are hard enough. Okay, the ones I have next, I don't know if they're difficult enough. Let's find out. The question, the, the category is Disney. I'm glad Ross Blotcher is not here. <laughs> I know, for reals. Okay, well, unless he was on your team. So, was only the question number one, the 1968 Walt Disney postage stamp cost how many cents when it was released? No plus or minus. When was it released? 68. Hey, number two. The first appearance of Mickey Mouse in 1928 was in what short? Hey, in the movie or the book? 101 Dalmatians. 101 Dalmatians. Who is the main protagonist? Question four. Fess Parker plays Jim Coates in this 1957 non-cartoon Disney film about a boy and a dog in Kansas. What's the name of the film or the book? Well, no, it's a film. Might have been a book too. But I'm talking about the one Fess Parker was in. 1957, human beings walking around on screen. And the last question in the category of Disney. This 1961 Disney film starred Haley Mills, Brian Keith, and Maureen O'Hara. What was the name of that movie? Okay. Go to your rooms. Play nice. Thanks. <laughs> Two, Steamboat Willie. Unless Carl, you know that that's not right. For some reason. No, that that is correct. I can okay. give you additional trivia about Steamboat Willie. Sure. So somehow, in the process of things, uh, NBC ended up owning trademark Willie, and they traded him to ABC for Al Michaels, so oh, that they could get him for their Sunday Night Football. Hmm. Really. Yeah, another conspiracy. Like, or like at real? the time, Al Michaels was under contract to, to ABC, and NBC wanted to hire him on to be the host of, their, of NBC's new Sunday Night Football, and they actually traded Steamboat Willie to Disney for Al Michaels. Steamboat Willie is actually, I think, out of out of copyright now too. Yeah, or will be in the next year or so. Yeah. Well, so, he, he will be soon unless the powerful lobby that is Disney manages to persuade Congress to grant them an extension. So, um, I don't have any idea what number one would be. Um, well, last time we had the question, it was six cents. Then let's mm -hmm. do six cents. Um, is the main protagonist for 101 Dalmatians, that's the, the male dog? Male adult dog. No. I, I see dead people. That's from, from the sixth sense. Right. I had Cruella down. Well, oh, number three. That's, uh, that's the antagonist. The protagonist. From a certain set from a certain uh, point of view, she's the protagonist. She's not. Um I hate the uh, Okay, Romero's Romero. there. Hey, um, how are you? <laughs> Romero, can you see the... No, you can't. Um, Let me copy and paste the stuff. So, Carl, you said the male dog, adult male dog, is not the protagonist? Well... I mean, it could be. Or what I are mean, those little dogs or 
technically I don't really feel like there's is not really the protagonist. He's she's the antagonist. She right. she is one hundred percent not the protagonist. Okay. But I kind of feel like there isn't one protag uh, one single main protagonist. There really is no central protagonist of 101 Bell Bay. Yeah. So Susan, your question's it's wrong. Not the way oh. La -di -da -da. <laughs> Agnes is a good person. The it's protagonist is a good person. So it was oh. not Corella. Oh, it wasn't Corella, then dogs. it would be Lady. Then it would be Lady. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Hey, are we happy with all all of those? I don't know. Number one, three cents or five cents? What do you think? Yeah. 1968. I don't even know what a stamp costs today. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they're forever stamps. We have no idea anymore. Yeah. Most oh. of us use our um, online bill pedaling now. Right. Bill paying <laughs> and emails. We don't mail things as it boxes. We mail. We mail. You still send send in your bills by yep. mail? Yep. Wow. Yep. Yep. I feel like I'm when I check the mail, I'm just moving trash from one box into my bin in the house. That's all. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right. What is the stupid passcode for here? Hold on a second. Uh, three or five. Four. Two. <laughs> three or five. What do you want? Sixty-eight. I'm thinking it was more it could have been five three. cents but it's either like it it's three or five, guys, but i think it's five yeah because i think when the price of stamps started going up it they went up in very short period of times it kept going up in a very short period of time but that was later that's how we yeah, got that was later when stamp. it started going up so the stamps were still pretty cheap back then well they may not have been cheap because of the uh, of inflation. So number four, are we good with dog mm -hmm. and a boy in Kansas was sold yell or did that take place in Kansas? And if not, know. what I would be the other? I think I it, that took place in Florida. That was by the Florida writer Marjorie or something. But it may have been in Kansas or it maybe some other boy and dog film we don't know about what other boy and dog film were there what what was red fern you know where the red fern grows where the red fern grows is that about a boy and a dog i think so Well, now we have an option. Somebody needs to flip a coin. <laughs> Do red ferns grow in 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 Kansas? I was only mm -hmm. born there, but I don't know. <laughs> oh, I've never been there. I lived there for the first six or seven years of my life. Yeah. Oh, was that right? Yep. So are we moving to change the movie in number four? I, I don't know. I think Old Yeller is probably good. It's like, it's pretty classic. We have another person joining. I'm going to put him in your room right now. Oh, maybe I, thought, I thought we would get. Yeah, Abby. I thought we got Abby. Abby got put into the other room. Actually. We already had four. And they only had three. Oh, got it. So who do we get? Somebody new. Steven Stripe. Don't know who he is. We'll find out. That's probably because you let the passcode out Thursday night. <laughs> <I don't know. laughs> so now we're getting bombed, Zoom bombed. Yeah, I hope so. That'd be fun. <laughs> uh, no, we went through Zoom bombing enough and no, no. This is a, this is enough a exposing themselves <laughs> and and pornographic movies and music and oh god yeah. hi steven and, you can un unmute yourself and un and screen and show your up. face and we'll because we need are. help steven we need help the last we questions we uh, need help stefan ipod interesting name <laughs> yeah he's a frog oh he's living on a lily pad an ipad yep, a lily pad 
Yeah. Yeah. He's probably you having trouble figuring out how to use Zoom on on, uh, um, on the on iPad. The iPad yeah. It's, it's kind iPad of tricky, isn't it? Or something the word sounded like ladies. Yeah, I think it's a little bit odd to have, uh, I don't know, people who've told me that they've played on iPods have a lot of problems with um, with the Zoom. I don't know. Don't know. I do not know. It's just the way it's, it is. I sniffed. Shot it. So you guys got them pretty good? We don't know. Okay, season... Even if you can get something up, we need to know what uh, first class postage in 1968 was, and we need to know about um, uh, Jim Coates in a 1957 oh. Disney film about a dog and a boy in Kansas. We need help. Carl, Carl in the other room is just like, well, the answer last time was this. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> memorized or what? Yes, because he remembers crap. <laughs> the rest of us, I don't even remember these questions. Maybe well, I wasn't you here. Might not have been here Carl's Wait, only missed oh, like you two. Before, Susan? Hmm? That's dishonest. People have seen them before. They all know all the answers. But it doesn't mean we remember them. We don't uh -huh. remember anything, Ed. We don't, you know, we could get the same questions every Thursday night, <laughs> and some of us would never get it. Yeah, that's me. And wouldn't even think the question was familiar. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Very yeah. We're, we're, we're hopeless. We are hopeless. If we didn't learn it when we were five. Right. I'm going to close the room, so you guys better make some good guesses. Okay, well, Stephen, follow us, follow us into the main room. Yes, Stephen. So just when this is the done, room. I'm assuming he can hear us, but we can't see him or hear him. I'm going to um, actually add one more because uh, what is it called? One more question. One more five category, uh, five more questions because we've had mm -hmm. uh, a couple other people join. So I'm going to do that oh. just for the heck of it. These are going fast, oh, and fast. Instead of a bonus? I, I'm still planning on doing a bonus. Okay. So we're going to have round <laughs> five, six. Nice. But it's going fast. So I, I think it'll be fun to do it that way. I'm probably going to head out after this round. This has been fun. This is, it is this fun, is, huh? You should hour. show up on Thursday night, Ed. Well, it might be too late. It's way past your bedtime. No. Mm -hmm. And you're probably going to back again on Monday. Gibberish yeah. to those doctors mm -hmm. that you're teaching. <laughs> you I, know, I, I do you have a. Tired. I think I'll do it Monday as well because it's a holiday Monday. Oh, I'm not doing it Monday. Avery's coming. Oh, I think Avery's nice. coming on Monday. He needs to help us get the stuff back in the house that we took out of the house for the wedding. Oh. John's horrible, ugly reclining chair that I've wanted to get rid of for years. We got it out of the house for the wedding and the barbecue. But when winter comes, he needs to sit in it again. Poor guy. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So. We just had a wedding at our house, Ed. Oh, I think oh, it was amazing. From Facebook. Absolutely amazing. And we are joined by Avi and Romero. So there we go. I told I told uh, Adrian. I said we're still playing trivia because she's chatting with me. I'm like, well, why aren't you at playing trivia? So we're doing short trivia today. She goes, oh, does Romero, hi. Is everybody wearing shorts? We're losing. We're going to get you. And Ed, you shouldn't leave. No, I've already put them on. We get, once we get Romero, we're going to be okay. No, too bad. Too You're late. We already Romero's got Romero. already on the other team. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. we're I not giving him up. up. How? Oh, waiting, but... Can you hear me now? Yeah, we can hear you. Yep. Yes, we can oh, hear you. Yeah. Do we get yeah, to go back to our room and see if Steven knows some answers? <laughs> Steven? Yeah. Uh, some of those answers I don't know. Okay. Oh. 
Uh, Susan, why did you give them give us a Romero? Because I hit the wrong button, and once I put them on the team, I that's just I'm not going to take them yeah. off. So. Yes, you should because Ed is leaving and we're losing. Well, it's I might be able not to you... fair. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. I'm sorry, Romero. I'm sorry. <laughs> we need you so bad. What do you say, Romero? Should we should I, we have to move you to the other team? I'm fine with whatever. I mean, I, I didn't answer any of the other questions on the last rounds. I don't know how much help I'm going to be. And losing me doesn't cost you very much. <laughs> I can go too. <laughs> we all move to the same team. <laughs> there we go. I can mix you guys all up again. Everybody switches to the winning team. Okay, are you actually wearing a green pair of thing or is that some zoom? Uh, th there's actually a plant that is growing out of my head. Oh. Um, no, it's this is it's, it's a common it's a zoom thing. It's common in in Germany to it's wear only a Steiner thing. growing out of your head. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> so I'm gonna give you the answers to this. So let's see how well you guys did. Call it Grunkopf. Carl doesn't yeah. doesn't count because he he just has these things memorized. It's just something wrong, or he's looking off his he old. He should have been on his own team. Ooh, but that would be boring. <laughs> That would just be boring to be sitting there by yourself. Okay, so the 1968 Walt Disney stamp was six cents. Oh, off by a penny. Yay, Carl's memory. <laughs> I see dead people. <laughs> the, 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 the extent of the discussion was, well, the last time this question was asked, it was six cents. It still is six cents after that. Okay, and I think everybody got question two, Steamboat Willie. Okay, now there was some question about this, what the word protagonist means. Because I Pro. gotta look this up. Look it up. Susan. I thought it was the bad person. No, that's nope. the antagonist. No. Lead. Oh. <laughs> yeah, because we knew we knew what you wanted us to say. <laughs> How did you get this question past you guys before and it didn't get corrected? That's was surprising. Robert? I I can guarantee you if Leonard was present that night. <laughs> He wouldn't have let that lie. Yeah, he wouldn't have gotten it. Okay, so the protagonist, which is the question, is not the answer I have. There really is I, no main protagonist. That's okay. what was confusing me. It was several. Yeah. Okay, so it is, so I guess it would be the the dog that was the good dog, which, which the woman dog and the male dog and yeah. the, what were Yeah, I was thinking like if if you're going to pull me, like pull my finger, then maybe the male dog, but just by slight margin, just because the time period males tend we, to... We, yeah, we, we put the male dog, Pongo, and in parentheses said, definitely not Cruella de Vil, parentheses. Okay, you're right. It, the answer I had, I don't know how I got this through, was Cruella de Vil, but that would be the antagonist, yeah. yeah. Okay, so... See, I told you that was that was what I was... Okay, so if you have that motivation thinking process and you've got the male dog and the female dog Pongo and what was her name? Lady. 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 Oh, duh. Lady in the Tramp. <laughs> no, it wasn't Lady <laughs> because the Lady was Lady in the Tramp. Oh, this is 101. Was, lady was the dog in, oddly enough, Lady in the Tramp. <laughs> <laughs> wow. So who was the female dog in, in um, 101 Dalmatians? We should uh, know that. Look it up. Okay, here it is. Mrs. Oh. I think it's... Perda. Perdina. Perdina? Wait. The original story, Pongo and his mate, Mrs. M-I-S-S-I-S, -S -S -S, had a litter of 15 puppies. So it was Mrs. They were oh. later joined by Perdina, Perdita, a mother Dalmatian whose puppies have been sold by Corella de Ville. Well... Okay. 101 Dalmatians. Yeah, so you guys are going to get this one. All right, so here we go. Question, oh, where did everything go? So the next one is Fess Parker was in Old Yeller. Oh, yeah. we did it, guys. Yeah. <laughs> Pulled it out somehow. Okay, in the 1961 Disney film starring Haley Mills, Brian Keith, and Maureen O'Hara. Oh my gosh, that was like a, a like a big deal for me. I remember this. The Parent Trap. I loved it. Some of it was filmed in Monterey area. 
So, Susan, sometimes you need to do a search to see how many times Haley Mills turns up in your entire trivia spreadsheet. Does she really? There's at least three or four different times Haley Mills' name has come up. Probably a lot more than that because I can, I can remember at least four right now off the top of yeah. my head. Very good. Okay, so let's go to the score. So, Stephen, welcome. Brand new time for you, too. Sorry that you couldn't get the passcode and get in here quicker enough, but that's okay. You are on the team the called Indictments, team. shooting for 200. So that's your team name. All right, so let's do these scores real quick. You know, in the small town in Kansas where I grew up, the only job anyone could get was uh, man was processing flour down at down at Haley Mills. But <laughs> 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 Okay, I believe so Haley Mills' name came up as a in, in one of my rounds where people whose last names were verbs. Yeah, I think we've had her a bunch of times. Indictments shooting for 200. What's your score? Three. If NBC News crashes, it's Susan's fault for distracting Mike. Five. I was kind of disappointed you didn't come up with original questions for today. No. Sorry. <laughs> I'll just have you not play, or you can do it. You can run it, and I won't remember any of these questions, that's for sure. Okay, so I'm going to do one more five question thing because we're going really fast. I don't know if we're losing right. or not, but did we just lose them? But we've gained, we've gained Romero and Steven. Okay, Steven, so here's how it's going to go. I'm going to put these questions into the chat, and then you're going to go into your team. And if you can't, if they can't hear you really well, that's fine. Just write in chat. So this is how we're going to do this because your team is. So there's ready. there's no bonus round. Yeah, I'm going to do a bonus round. Yeah, but I, you don't have enough columns in your spreadsheet. I I will manage. <laughs> manage. I think we can use slashes or whatever. Should I put Romero on team one? Yes. Yes. Yeah, I'm fine with okay, that. Okay, Romero, you've been moved. To we team need one. desperate help. <laughs> okay. Where's Ed? Did he leave already? He left. He's left. Oh, I he didn't get to say goodbye. Him. Okay, before we start with it, you know, did, did we say is Pongo or Perdita? You didn't put the answers for the. Oh, for three. Yeah, one of those dogs that's the male. Okay. Dog ever. Now, speaking of the name Perdita, can anyone name a current TV show, one of whose stars' name is Perdita? Hmm. <laughs> Is it ABC? Um, no. I think it may have. It may or may not. I don't think so. No idea. It certainly it's is. Perdita. It may. It may actually be right now, but no, I think it's no. It's not. What's the answer? Uh, Magnum PI, hmm. the new Higgins, Perdita oh. Weeks. Hmm. Magnum PI is. They the still have. I think the rebooted. The Lady Higgins is. Oh, I didn't know they rebooted it. it. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. It's new, five new five new seasons. Movie? I think it's been canceled, but they still have five more episodes to go. I've never heard of it. I mean, I've heard of Magnum PI, but I didn't know they were. I, I knew the reboot existed, but I had no interest in it. This the original was was that the Tom Selleck one? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And in that one, Higgins was an old British man. In this one, the new one, it's a young British lady. Okay, so who ends up with kissing our, with our, who, who may or may not have been Robin Matthews with our next category? This one I hope is a little bit more difficult. Math. Don't go off of Carl's memory because he may be wrong. Oh, okay. famous crimes. Okay, I'm going to give you a, I'm going to give you a synopsis, and then from that synopsis, you're going to tell me what the crime is. And whatever murder, murder, what, what the crime is, or what, or the person <laughs> who's the murderer, you know, it'll make sense. Okay, okay, let's put this in the chat to begin with. 2007, Italy, imagine that. 2007, Italy, American woman is a student in Italy. She returns to her apartment to find her roommate has been murdered. Murdered. Italian police pinned the crime on her and her boyfriend, saying it was a sex crime. 
she and her boyfriend are both tried and sent to prison in Italy. Appeal after appeal, and finally they're acquitted. Who is this American woman? And eventually becomes a journalist and an author. Da, da, da. Hmm. Yeah, I'm, I'm. Hey, don't say anything, Stephen. You'll talk about it in your in your room. Okay, question two. 1892, Massachusetts. This single woman was accused of murdering her, murdering her father and stepmother. It was a bloody mess. This daughter was tried and found not guilty by an all male jury. She inherited with her sister, who was not involved, their father's money, about eight million dollars in today's money. She purchased a home and lived another 30 years in wealth and leisure. What is the name of this murderess? Uh, if she was acquitted legally, you can't call her a murderess. She's dead now. Yeah, An alleged dead. murderess. Alleged murderer. <laughs> okay, number three. We're going to the year 1996 in Boulder, Colorado. Christmas evening, someone murdered this little girl. A strange kidnapping ransom letter was found written the child had not been the child had not been kidnapped. Ransom money demanded was one hundred and eighteen thousand dollars, the exact same amount the father had just received as his Christmas bonus. The killer has not been found. Name this child. These are think are too easy. All right, question four. The year is nineteen seventy five in Michigan. Labor American labor union leader president of the Teamsters, thought to have been killed by the mob. His body is still missing. What is the Do we have to give her the correct name? <laughs> yeah. What is the name of the famous missing man? Yeah, these are too easy. Okay. Uh, for number three, uh -huh. the question, do we have to give her the correct name? Yeah, I want the correct name. You just said name the child, so it wasn't... Oh! <laughs> Not. We've missed you, Avi. I will name her Sarah. <laughs> That's not fair. We're going to name her something different. <laughs> no, I've just been clear that I want to know the name that is written on my spreadsheet right here, right now. Okay. Well, so, well your name's written there somewhere at one nope, point. Nope, nope, nope. Okay, here's question five and the last in the famous crimes category. Dun, dun, dun. 1951. This American couple were found guilty of spying and providing nuclear weapons designs to the Soviet Union, which... Did you say nuclear? <laughs> <laughs> That's why we asked the question. They were executed for treason in 1953 when the Iron Curtain fell. Extensive documents were discovered to show they were working with the Soviet Union, which was now sort of Russia. What is the last name of this notorious couple. Hey, I'm sending you to your rooms and Romero, you have just been moved to so don't go to your room, Romero. I'm going to move you. Wait, how do I do that? Okay. I have to do that before I move you guys to the breakout rooms, don't I? Yeah. Or can I do that? Let me think. Breakout rooms not started. Oh, yeah, yeah. Of course I can do it. Remove to room one. Okay, here you go. Go to your room. Yeah, I'm in room one, right? Yes. You're coming with us. What's his name? Jack Nicholson played Jimmy Hoffa. <clears throat> yes, he did. I think two is Lizzie Borden. Number two, yeah. I remember this story, but I don't remember the name. She killed her mother with an axe. There's a song about it. And number it's three, it's that, it's that little, it's that pageant girl. John Benet yeah, Ramsey. Benet. Yeah. yeah. Number five is uh, Julius and Ethel. Rosenberg. Rosenberg. And number one is Amanda Knox. Amanda Nuts? Oh, Knox. 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 I mean, I thought it, Amanda Hug and Kiss. 
I could almost but, use the name Amanda Knox for my people whose last name are verbs. Brown, if I don't worry about. And all right, okay. so we got Amanda Knox, Kim Stewart's president's name, Jimmy Hoffa. Oh, Jimmy, Jimmy Hoffa. Hoffa. Yeah. Yeah. For which one? Oh, seventy-five. Four. Okay, four is Jimmy Hoffa. Five is the Rosenbergs. So what's three? John Benet Ramsey. Yeah. Oh, that's right. John Benet. Yeah. I'm closing the rooms. Too easy. This is way too easy for everybody. I've got but to finally hard. something I knew. <laughs> way too simple. Yeah, but it's no fun to have everybody just know them. Yeah, but fun. we're tired of getting ones and twos. I know. <laughs> Okay, I'm gonna do bonus round next, and that bonus round is gonna be hard. So, but we have Romero. <laughs> yep. <laughs> I don't know how good I'm gonna be, or how useful. Right so I'm gonna do this again. I think on Monday. I think I don't think they have anything pl planned for Monday because it's Labor Day. Uh, hopefully, this time of the day works out. Let's see. I'm gone. I'm gone. Uh, let's see. So today's oh, so Labor Day. I'm in. What's good to see Ed? Yes, I, I don't know. I haven't seen him in person. I don't know how we accidentally found ourselves on Facebook. How do, how do you know him? Years. From where? But the From Skeptics the toolbox? toolbox in like 1994. I guess he's we're one of my Facebook five. friends. And he and now we're, we've been Facebook friends for a long time. Yeah. It's always good to have a huh? statistician as a Facebook friend. That's true. <laughs> And another birder because sometimes I, I have, have too to many ask bird questions. You um, you have a uh, Joshua J coming up here pretty soon, right? On Wednesday, I think I'm going to be on my flight to Dallas. And I'm going to go out to the storage unit oh, yeah. and clean up all the dust. That's Can you capture a the... picture? Put a camera inside, facing out, so that I we send roll up that door and the picture. Janine, I want to I want to see the face uh, picture of uh, Joshua J's face when he sees that. Room. When he sees it, <laughs> I sent I sent him a picture because he had the idea that we could box everything up in a couple hours and take it over to FedEx. FedEx. Said, He's going to no, take this to FedEx. It's not going to work that way. I thought he was I, bringing a cart. I mean, a, a well, vehicle. he couldn't do that right then. So, um, and I. I, I sent him a picture and said, you know, this is really reminiscent of a small castle of chaos. All right. <laughs> it should be interesting. Okay, and, everybody, we're back. Yeah. That was just way too easy for you guys. Oh, my gosh. You just rattled them off. Just not fair. I have to make these much more difficult. I will think about it in the future. Okay. Number one, Amanda Cox is the one who is in Italy. She was not guilty. The um, the Italian government just went after her. Like, I think you're thinking of the porn version of it. It's Amanda Knox. Knox. Yeah. Oh. Knox. You spelled it right, but you pronounced it wrong. Oh, cool. I've only heard it uh, written. I've seen it written. Um, only heard it written. Heard it written. <laughs> read the. I read at least one book on it. Very. Interesting. Have you ever seen it out loud? <laughs> question number two this is the thing that just absolutely blows my mind when i was in <laughs> oregon i was at portland and for some reason the name lucy borden came up and we didn't do it in oregon it's not an oregon thing well the <laughs> thing is is that i janine goes i have no idea who that is and uh eric schaefer says I have no idea what you're talking about. What, who or what is a Lizzie Borden? She and took over the podium and asked the audience. And there's an audience of 50 people in front of me. I said, hands up everybody who has heard of Lizzie Borden. And half the room had. How, has, how a, has anybody not heard of Lizzie Borden? I yeah, asked that question on too. Facebook. And people were like, <laughs> of course I've heard of Lizzie Ooh. Borden. Of course I've heard of Lizzie Borden. Like, 
I've heard the name, but I but I wouldn't have been able to tell you that, that she was a murder or an alleged murderer. You took, know, you know, right? Right? Yeah, you took an axe and gave her Brown. 40 wax. Yep. Yeah. One, yeah. One guy, Jack, gave her, and sang the gave song. Gave her father just... 20 wax more. That's the old. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's, it's a, it's, it's like not knowing what the Spanish Inquisition is or something, you know, from Monte Carlo. Nobody expects like, the Spanish Inquisition. That's Lizzie possible, Borden too, if we didn't have axe, Randy with us. Gave her father 40 wax. When she saw what she had done, she gave her mother 41. 41. And it was her stepmother, actually. Okay. Well, then that's I, excusable. Well, that's true. <laughs> just a few years older than her. Number three is John Benet Ramsey. Um, Joe Nickel from the Skeptic Community has written a really good um, analysis on this. If you uh, want to look it up in the Skeptical Inquirer mm -hmm. and uh, what he thinks actually happened, this is one of those things we will probably never ever. It probably is the brother. Probably, probably. was the brother. Mm -hmm. And the parents just um, covered it up. Yep. And the brother's still around. The parents are gone, but the brother seems to have seems to have bought into he didn't do it so whether he doesn't remember doing it or he's convinced himself he doesn't do it it's pretty interesting so or he just me. really doesn't want to say because i don't think there's any yeah, statute why would he limitations want to do that? on murder yeah there's no statute limitations on murder he was a child i think he was like 10 oh he may have had a child but still there's no statute limitations yeah. on south america from prosecuting him <laughs> so um yeah, so adults have been convicted of crimes they committed as juveniles, and they were given the juvenile sentence. But adults still can be convicted of their crimes as a juvenile. Well, he's had a, he's had a convention. The whole family has been convicted that their life is absolutely ruined. Ruined. Okay. Well, I think anytime you have a child murdered, whether someone in your family did it or someone outside well, your parents family did it. all got accused for it one after yeah. another all the time so their lives were completely ruined so it wasn't like i would imagine if you're a parent and your child dies for any reason there's yeah that's yeah. not there's a trauma but then to be accused of it in public media and yeah, that's part of my trivia team my trivia game is they're so famous and the next one was jimmy hoffa we still don't quite know where he was is <laughs> His body's DNA is now. Who knows? I didn't know that was Michigan. If somebody was to tell me what what state was that happening in, I would have said New York City or Chicago, Illinois. No, well, they kept talking about Michigan. that they thought he was buried in Giant Stadium. He's been dug up over all over the place, hasn't he? I think so. Lake Mead, when the water goes down. Oh, <laughs> the last one is just really a sad tragedy. The kids, I believe, Ethel and uh julius rosenberg i believe the children are um are uh, like in their 50s and 60s now and they're they don't believe their parents were guilty there's a book uh and it was actually a movie uh, with uh what's his name a book called book of daniel it was based on that <laughs> yeah with I think uh, I, I, the guy who turned out to be a creep oh the, the so gotta be more specific these days yeah <laughs> are we talking about um but about but no, not that. No, no, no. You mean Kevin Spacey? No. The other guy that turned out to be a creep. <laughs> <laughs> the list is long. <laughs> we have too much. So yeah, so this this is a fascinating case. Um, you know, was it money that motivated them, or did they think that they were? I know there was a lot of third. What is it called? Where they thought that it was inevitable that Mer they would save. Right. They thought they would save lives by giving secrets to the to the people like in Germany and, and Italy or whatever because they thought that it would make it so that well that's what that's what Fuchs did on Oppenheimer is that he told you know he, he was the one that gave information to Russia and the idea was to well there was a group of you know, scientists at uh, Los Alamos that said that they had to if they give it to Russia, then there wouldn't be any war because each one would be against each other. And the Rosenbergs had the same idea. Yeah, I have a feeling that's that is, you know, there's a lot of other things that go into um, some of these crimes that, you know, they may believe they were doing the loyal thing to America. It's interesting. Anyway, it's fascinating. Okay, so let's do our scores, which I know what they are already because 
because I'm <laughs> so good at this. Let me do that real quick. I'll show my screen because I so show my work. Tim Timothy Hutton, he was the star of the movie Daniel based on the book, the book of Daniel by E.L. Doctorow, which was based on Julius and uh, Ethel Rosenberg. And he was accused of rape uh, in March of 2020. Mm. Oh, wow. Okay, so... Which I guess there was other stuff going on in the news that you may have missed it. Indictment. In March of 2020. Shooting for 200. You have... Aye. And let's give them double points for that. <laughs> if ABC News crashes, it's Susan's fault for distracting Mike. Also five. Okay, so I Bad have I have a, a bonus round. This will be a little more tough. We've never but done that. Was before. the bonus round? No, I'm doing a bonus round because I just want to do a it. bonus style round. So this last one is going to be difficult. Okay, and it's ten questions. And I'm going to make it a little more difficult and we've never done it before. So here it is. Based on statistics from 2022, 2022, states, U.S. states with the lowest effective tax rates. There are, I want to hear, there are 10 of them. So I want the 10 states, U.S. states with the lowest effective tax rates. Is it income tax or property tax? It's all together tax. No, well, it depends. So if you're to a... okay. It this is... is according to Washington Post, who did a statistical analysis. Let me pull it up since I have to pull it up here. Let's see. They did a statistical analysis using. Where is it? I gotta find my link here. Lowest effective tax rate. Okay, so this is a Washington Post article done. Um, I talked about this before as well, that they looked at all kinds of different tax rates, state, um, um, all kinds of taxes and just lumped them all in and just came up with the lowest effective tax rates. And I can give you a link when I'm done, but that's all I'm giving you right now because I can't. So I want to know what the 10 states you would move to if you had, if you all you were looking at is going to escape taxes. Well, it would depend. Am I retiring and I'm not earning money anymore, or yeah. do I have a ton of property, or are, 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 are my, are my, am I earning income, capital gains? Where's my money coming from? So we're going to go to our breakout rooms now. <laughs> <laughs> so you guys can figure it out. You can have that discussion amongst yourselves. Ten. I want ten. There's something else. I tell you, I love these people. They challenge me all the time. So I'm going to put this. So we had an extra round this time. So I'm going to make a round five on my spreadsheet. Yeah. Florida. A lot of people move to Florida because they don't want yeah, to pay taxes. Florida. Florida. Texas. Texas, I believe, Alaska. Okay. Probably Wyoming. Yeah, that seems right. I know a lot of the old Jews moved to Arizona, so maybe maybe there's that. You're thinking of I think uh I think Nevada is one of those states that like has no income tax or something. They definitely have done something yeah. to make it friendly for casinos. So, what about well, the casinos New make it friendly for people? <clears throat> which is North why they Carolina. Really you know, again, it depends on whether Susan taken to get casino taxes. She says there isn't a, a list for effective taxes, so whatever that list decides. Right. Yeah. So we have to read the read the mind of whoever wrote the list. What what um 
Did you say what source you got this from? They Washington have Post. Statistical team okay. I, uh, um, for it that evaluates all these interesting problems. We've what had, was the title of the article? Uh, I'll yeah, link to it in a minute. <laughs> yes, the title might say like something like <clears throat> um, personal taxes or like corporate taxes or combined. Oh, yeah. my, it, when they, usually when they say effective tax rate, they've basically looked at income tax, property tax, and sales tax and figured out basically what Oklahoma and Kansas Oklahoma and Kansas at some point we'll have 50 <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> we'll have to choose stand up <laughs> well, at least you only have 50 to choose from right yeah yeah exactly Well, I like Wyoming and Louisiana and Texas. Um, I'm not sure. And Delaware. Yeah, yeah. Delaware, Alaska, Florida, and Nevada. Um, what about Mississippi, since that's so poor? I mean, I don't think they could even get taxes out of their people. But they do have some rich people. And they have riverboat gambling there now. You're talking yourself in really and big. out of the out of the answer in the same sentence there, Cindy. <laughs> but I think you got yourself talked into it and out of it in the same sentence. <laughs> what Romero? So, uh, like uh, people are really poor. Wouldn't they be like in the lower tax brackets? And so probably they wouldn't be taxed as much, maybe. Yeah. 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 What about Missouri? I'm thinking those central states like Missouri, Nebraska, Kansas, I'm kind of thinking they're not the lowest. Nebraska definitely isn't. Yeah, I I'm sure not. I'm I live in Nebraska now, so I know it don't. Oh. Oh, okay. <laughs> I did live in North Dakota, and they do have a fairly low tax rate. What about South Dakota? I kind of like South Dakota. I was leaning towards that one, too. Yeah. Um, I can't tell you about South Dakota. One of them's a place where financial institutions go, and I think that's South Dakota. I thought that was Delaware. I know Del like I Delaware is one. Yeah, LLC. I think South everybody's, Dakota. Also, everybody's registered in Delaware all the time. New Hampshire. What about some of those yeah. north northeastern? I think New Hampshire tends they tend to be more like libertarian, right? So they would. New Hampshire. Probably. Yeah. So they would probably want to cut taxes. Well, I don't think it'd be Oklahoma. Oklahoma is higher. I can't higher than Kansas, I think. Yeah. Yeah. What if we went with the four that we have, Delaware, Alaska, Florida, and then South Dakota, Wyoming, New Hampshire, Texas, Mississippi, Arkansas. What do you think about Louisiana? That, yeah. this, would, this would give us 10. Yeah, Is Louisiana, that's not a really rich state either. Do you have Nevada on that list? Yeah. Delaware, Alaska, Florida, Nevada, South Dakota, Texas, Mississippi, Arkansas, Wyoming, and New Hampshire. Louisiana has all that oil money, too. They have right. all that offshore. 
So they have a lot of income from that. But would that be counted as yeah, part do of they... the tax stuff income? Like those would be I don't know if you're I don't know if, I don't know if they're counting corporate taxes or just the routine property and income taxes. Yeah. You got to get some and income capital somehow. gains and capital gains. Yeah. Up with anything else? What on this list would be the first thing we bumped off anyway? Doing uh, world news tonight, and so like that TV three. Uh, Susan, can you mute Mike? Yep. You don't want to know what's happening on on ABC News tonight? Be kind, like, <laughs> I don't know if they want us to. Going on in the world, there could be breaking news, and we'd be the first to know. That's true. Yeah. What's funny is that he's actually speaking on a telephone. That's cool. Why is that so funny? The professional world still uses telephones a lot. Wait, wait, that is a cord. Yeah, I know. Yeah. yeah. That those are still fairly popular in offices. He's gonna have to turn us down because we're driving them probably crazy. You guys got your 10, I guess, huh? We have well, we have 10. We're just trying we to have... decide whether we like we're this 10. 10. Yeah. Susan, do you have any ideas? I have lots <laughs> of ideas. And I could tell you about 50 of them. <laughs> I'll give them to you in alphabetical order. Can you do that? Can yeah. you? Huh. I would have to cheat and look it up. <laughs> <laughs> so nice to have you here, Avi. Very, very odd. Feels yeah. good to have you back like the old days. Yeah. Thank you. Good to be back. I just got a newspaper delivery. Remember these? No, I don't. Those, those aren't real. You gotta read the cartoons. Yeah. How but you got your old. I thought you got all your cartoons online. Oh no, no. Some of them I watch. I actually wait and wait until I look at them on the paper because that way, it's, you know, feels better to have them on paper. Okay, so I was gonna make the to thing go away. This has been fun. Looks like we've got 11 people. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, nine, ten. Ten people showed up. One, two. Ten people in total. And kind of last minute, I put this game together yesterday to play today. So... I think I'm going to do it again in a couple of days, but I, my goal is to do this every month at least and uh, on a weekend where people are able to join who are in Europe and who are on the East Coast a little bit better time. So that's my goal. We'll see. It's a game 177. September 3rd. Fascinating watching They're on the spreadsheet, right? Well, saying that we would like to go to Cozumel. Cozumel? Yeah. Okay, that's, yeah. yeah. So that's um, off the Gulf of Mexico? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. okay, so I will give you a link to the article. Oh, cat butt. <laughs> I'll give you a link to the article after I give you these. So this is like an interesting discussion. 
it's a Washington Post statistical team that writes a column that talks about odd questions. I think we've had some of their some of these before. I think the last time I think we did one on fast food restaurants and on um, what U.S. state has the most fast food places and on highways and what uh, it was really interesting some of the the statistical things they look at <clears throat> but this was states with the lowest effective tax rates as of 2022 however you rate tax rates <laughs> okay so you ready go well number one um i'll put them in the chat right now was uh Alaska. <laughs> then Wyoming. I'll, I'll I'll put this in the chat in a second. Wyoming. Okay. okay, so Alaska, Wyoming. This is the order: Tennessee, South Dakota, Michigan, Texas, North Dakota, Georgia, South Carolina, and Oklahoma. It was really interesting oh. having Stephen in the chat because he was able. I mean, oh. in the game because he lives in Nebraska and he used to live in North Dakota. So he knew these places because of that. Okay. Wow, I'm surprised Florida wasn't on the list. Nope. Yeah. Texas, I apparently are pretty high there. Okay, and here's and Georgia, link. we totally ruled out. <laughs> here's the link. You can find out more information about it. I will be using this uh, statistical. Uh, the people who do the stats, I think they've only been doing them for about a year, and they. Um, look at a lot of really interesting here's to the healthy heroes this is our refuge is that you Cindy? <laughs> okay okay i muted you cindy you have to unmute yourself if you has something popped up all right so let's go and whoever's in charge of your team did you look that list over let's go to scores and see who finally won on this short day All right, so indictments, shooting for 200. How many did you get? Four. That gives you a total of nine. See how so you do it. You add numbers together, and so you don't have to have a fifth column, sixth column. All right, if ABC News crashes, it's Susan's fault for distracting oh, Mike. We only got negative five. They've won. <laughs> <laughs> We got, pos we got positive five. So, so ten total. Oh, I guess I got. We got five because we didn't. We didn't know we were allowed to get more than five points in this round. <laughs> we thought all the rounds were limited to five points. Oh, so bad, so bad. All right, so there you go. That's who's the winners of this week's, this month's, or whatever. Now I'm planning. Like I said, I think I might do this again on Monday. I will decide here after I've had lunch. But thank you guys for joining me. It's fun to see you guys and some new faces. Well, we didn't get to see Stephen's face, but Stephen, work on your work on getting so you can see your face. Um, nice to see you, RV. Yeah, get you get get out out there you go. Can you see me now? Yeah, I can see him. Yeah. Yeah, there you go. Okay. Here so you are. Did you ever take the picture, Susan? I'm trying to figure out the bloody buttons. That's what I'm <laughs> iPads are a pain. Rumor has it that iPads are difficult. Yeah, I'm going to take a picture. So everybody look at the picture at the screen and smile. We're missing people. That's all right. You're here. I got a picture. All right. Sounds great. I got that. Okay. So I'm going to put this up on YouTube in a few hours. And because it has to load. It won't even take that long, actually. Okay. Uh, today is the. What is it? I was going to go feed my chipmunks. Today is the 20, 2023, September 2nd. All right. So thank you guys for joining me. I really appreciate it. It's fun to be able to chat with people for a little bit and um, get to know each other. And the different time zones really help to have something in a, on, a, on a weekday. So follow me on Facebook. If you write um, on the, the event link, that you were interested in attending today or whatever it is, then whenever I send out the next link, it'll automatically invite you again. So can you, works. can you in, invite me this time though? 
the next time because okay I, I will i will make sure i invite you next time abby but it's great okay so great everybody so good to bye. see you all right good care goodbye everybody, everybody. Bye.